Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome member of the Brazilian Chamber of Deputies, Eduardo Bolsonaro. Yeah, yeah. Mike Lindell! <laughs> it's an honor to be here right after the next President of the United States. And right before the great Argentinian President, Javier Milei. Today, I'll tell you how a country loses its freedom. It, I look around and see these ordinary men and women who dreamed of a better country left into a dirty prison as if they were worthless than an animal. And for those who think I'm exaggerating, I will mention a few simple examples. You can take a look in the images. Felipe Martins, the President Bolsonaro's international advisor, like Jared Kushner, a brilliant young man in his studies with a promising future, imprisoned by a court of exception, accused of a coup d'etat never attempted or planned, and without hope of minimally fair treatment, as due process and broad defense no longer exist in Brazil. Silvio Ney Vasquez, former chief, chief of police during my father's administration, the chief who most seized the drugs in Brazil. Eduardo Naime, chief of police, who was injured during the protests on January 8th while working during his holidays. And also, lawyers, veterinarians, journalists, comedians, pastors, a sign language interpreter, a gospel singer, a homeless, an individual diagnosed with a high degree of autism, all of them imprisoned and accused of coup. These people are now receiving sentences of 17 years in jail. And Clazão, salesman, died inside the prison as waiting trial for almost one year. And just like them, almost 2,000 people were arrested in a single day in Brazil. Elderly, pregnant women, and even children accused of being terrorists, of having attempted an armed coup, even though not a single weapon was seized. The totalitarian judicial system created the narrative with the help of the legacy media that these ordinary people were a threat to Brazilian state. And this climate of persecution expanded censoring and hunting critics of the current government. And under the excuse of preserving democracy that does not exist anymore, these selfless tyrants crush political opposition in the country. Today, even journalists are exiled in the United States, like Alan dos Santos, Rodrigo Constantino, and Paulo Figueiredo, who is here at CPEC and had a viewership similar to Tucker Carlson's when the regime forced them out. Their social media were taken down by orders of the court, their bank accounts frozen, and even their Brazilian passports have been canceled by those same people they criticized. The only judge who dared to differ from the regime was fired. Ludmila Lins Grillo, who is also present here in the audience, had a similar fate. All of this is just a step towards the ultimate goal to imprison my father, the former president, who dared to put the interest of Brazilian people first. My father is now prosecuted and slandered in the most varied ways, as in every tyranny, the limit of the ridiculous no longer exists, and they even faces the accusation of having committed the terrible crime of disturbing a whale. Yes, this is not a joke. My father is criminally charged for passing by a whale on a jet ski through a complaint made by Lula da Silva's environmental minister. My friends, I conclude by making an appeal report what is happening in Brazil. Tomorrow, we will have one million people on the streets of Sao Paulo in support of President Bolsonaro. Make these images go all around the world. American congressmen, we ask for a hearing in your Congress. You are the leaders of the free world. Help us to expose this tyranny. It says my father often quotes in John 8, 32. 
and you know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But there is still hope for Brazil. I'm looking forward here now to listen to the great president of our brother country, Argentina, Javier Milei. God bless you. God bless the free world. Thank you, CPAC. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president of Argentina, Javier Millet.